Namo Sakyamuni Buddha. Today I want to talk to you about the uh, Lotus Sutra, the uh, first chapter, the introduction. <coughs> Let me say why we talk about the Lotus Sutra. <coughs> like you know that uh, Buddhism is the living religion. It's not static. And even Buddha, he predicted this uh, 21st century is the Buddhism with the Western people. He called that for the red face because of the white people. <laughs> we call the red face, you know, because the white people, when you go to the sun, it turn red. So they call religion of the red face. He know already, he predicted he go from one civilization to the next. We go, it's the evolution and uh, <clears throat> you know Buddhism go to three periods. The first period is uh, the original Buddhism at the time when Sakyani Buddha is uh, preaching. So they have only one sutra, one vinyana. And then you go to the second phase, they call it school Buddhism. They were a different school, and they start fighting. They start having a lot of different opinion. They have divided, and <clears throat> one school they call it Theravada school, the Enders. They are pretty conservative, and they are very rigid, and it's boring. I have to say a little kind of like boring, and it's not good for the expansion of the. Uh, religion and uh, <clears throat> the people start you know feel tired about that and that sooner or later the religion died down so they have a, another woman they call a majority of the practitioner the uh, <clears throat> Shangha Kita they start to realize that if they practice the way, that strict way, that rigid way, the religion would not flourish. So they have a new movement, the Sangakita, the uh, Marijiki people. They decide now that we need to advance. We cannot stay that way. way. And <clears throat> the first one, the Theravada, the, uh, the elder, they very strict and they think only the monastic, the male monastic, the, the monk can realize, can reach to the level of a nirvana. The rest that, there's no nun and there's no lay practitioner, lay people. The lay people at that time, they think, oh, the only way they can do, they get the merit, I mean, go to the temple. Uh, give uh, donation to the uh, Shangha, I mean the, um, the monk, so they can have a merit and the next life will be better life for them. They never expect to become enlightened or to become Buddha. Even the monastic and their, their religion, their level, they can reach a nirvana only. That them, that like to stop. They're like a paradise for them. It's not really paradise. It's like uh, the step they give up on the uh, desire, on this thing, and they reach a level. They then go to the uh, cycle of birth and death. That's all they do. They can never reach uh, the Buddha, um, Buddhahood level. So the majority people, the one who really practice love, they want to open the door for everybody. They start that now. It's not that way. So there's a new movement. It's called the uh, Mahayana. The Mahayana is more open-minded. They said no. Even the time of Buddha, they have no discrimination. Look at the on the sutra before. Like uh, look at the Lotus Sutra. In one chapter, one young girl, she's only eight years old, she become Buddha. 
That means there's no age discrimination, no gender discrimination. So why now? He said only the monastic, only the monk can reach that level, not that way. So they go to that stage, they are more open. And they admit people, they said, the Shankar have to comprise monk, nun, lay practitioner. And they have one man, he's a Vimala Kirti. He's a lay practitioner, he's very brilliant. And even they have one sutra written by him. He said, no, lay people can be very brilliant and they can become Buddha. And in that, they go a little bit too far. They attack the monastic, monastic set. They picture the high-ranking monk like a, um, Kashyapa, like a dull guy, you know, credulous, childish, you know, not brilliant like a Vilam, uh, Vimala Akirti. A little bit too much, okay? So they go to the compromise, get the Mahayana. It's much better and open the, the door for everybody. And they make the religion more appealing to the general public. So that we have a Mahayana now. And now that we see it, it's a living religion. So it adjusted to the <coughs> Western um, civilization. The, the Western people go to Buddhism much more because it's not rigid, it's not like uh, before I thought, oh, maybe Buddhism belongs to the Indian people or Salem or something. And we said, no, it's the cosmic religion, like, uh, like Einstein, he's, <coughs> he says that. He says that all the religions, they are one religion, but Buddhism is a cosmic religion. It belongs to the cosmos, okay? And you think about that, think about why Einstein said Buddhism is a cosmic religion. It's a wonderful religion. It's open for everybody. And there's no discrimination whatsoever. So today I talk about the Lotus Sutra. The Lotus Sutra was uh, preached by our Buddha the end of his life, near, near the end of his life. It's a wonderful uh, sutra. First, he didn't think he teach that. And uh, <clears throat> one time they made a meeting at the Vulture Peak, all the monk and nun, every being there, and the uh, high-ranking monk asked him to preach, he refused it. He said, it's too difficult. And people didn't believe it. And if they didn't believe it, they will say something not good about the sutra. It's like uh, blasphemy. It's not good. So they insist, insist. The third time said, okay, now I talk to the uh, Lotus Sutra. So they call the Lotus Sutra the King the Sutra. What the Lotus Sutra? In the Lotus Sutra, Buddha teach you, have a two part. They have a 28 chapter. The first part is the historical aspect. And the second part is the ultimate dimension, okay? First, you know, you uh, read about the historical Buddha. You know, what happened when he's uh, the prince, he grew up, he had family and everything, and then he gave up the luxury life, he become a monk. And he practiced, he practiced, he gave us the good example. You know, in, they said the history, Buddha, he's already Buddha in the many past life. He come to this world, apparition. It's not to show as a deity, he just want to show it like a normal being. Due to his effort, due to his vision, he practiced, he gave us the example. He said, I do it. I become a Buddha. You can become Buddha yourself, okay? If you follow my example, you practice like me, and make the effort like me, and you give up on the desire, the luxury, and have a virtuous life, 
you can become Buddha. So that's the reason why he appeared as a, a prince, like a human being, and giving all the example to us. So he called the uh, Lotus Sutra, the King, the Sutra, because this Sutra, what Buddha say is that all the human being, we have something very precious, we don't believe it. It's the Buddha nature. And see, somebody says, that, oh, Buddha nature, what's Buddha nature? If you're all the reason we call awakened nature, or you call intrinsic value, it's something very precious. All the human being we have, it's not human being, all the sentient being have it. Here we say, oh, dog have a Buddha nature? Yes, they do. Cat, they have it? They do. Okay? Like you said, genome. The people, they don't have education like before. 19th century Italian, they have a genome. He said, what is genome? I don't believe in genome. I, I go to school, I never learned. We have a chromosome, we have DNA, we have a gene, we, have, we didn't know it. Now we tell, oh, plant have a genome, cat have a genome, dog have a genome, they don't believe it. So you tell people, you have a Buddha nature, they don't believe it. We have a, a, a wicked nature, they don't believe it. You have intrinsic value, they don't believe it. And you said, dogs and cats have a Buddha nature, they don't believe it. Oh, they don't get they do have it, but they have Buddha nature is very, very hidden. It's very difficult for them to discover it. So they have to go to the next life to become human being. They can elevate themselves, and then they can discover their true nature, the Buddha nature, or his true nature, the true inner self. They do have it, like the genome. They have a genome too. Plan have a genome too. All of them, all the sentient living beings have a genome. So we have a Buddha nature. So the Lotus Sutra is a very nice thing. Two part. The first part is historical dimension. That's a, something regular. The second part, ultimate dimension. So the first part, the historical dimension, lead you slowly, gradually to ultimate dimension. You first get in the ultimate dimension, you don't believe it. Also, it's a mystical, it's like a magical, it's something, it's not real. But after you go to the historical dimension, you go to the ultimate dimension, and then you understand more. It's a something ultimate, something extra, it's a higher, super. You have a no verbalism. There's no vocabulary. There's no written form to express to, to teachers. You have to go in there, discover yourself. You understand it. You feel it. And you assimilate the teaching. And then you understand. You visualize it yourself. Some people visualize, they see the Buddha, they see something. It's not always the invention. It's not. It's the higher understanding. It's the ultimate uh, dimension. Okay? And something you can understand, like, uh, for example, the telepathy, the communication, you said and so on. But you see, many people, like um, in the army, something, like uh, the husband, he's in the field. He get killed. But the wife at home, she knows already. She see him, he get old, he die. So when the army, they send people to announce, he said, oh, your husband get uh, K -I, uh, KIA. He said, I know already. I said, how you know? I dream it. I know. He tell me. I said, the telepathy. Sometimes, you know, mother and children, the same, they have the telepathy. When you go out, something happened. The mother at home, she knows already. She has the telepathy, the, the feeling, the sixth sense. Again, nobody can explain it, but they have a communication. They have something like a wave, and they transmit to that. Time. It's unbelievable. So really, it's the same thing. When you practice with devotion, with dedication, you visualize. You see Sakyamuni Buddha, Buddha, or you see Amitabha Buddha. You see yourself. You feel. Some people, they feel the 
perfume. They feel that and it's very, it's, it's something they know, they see it. It's a wonderful thing they see it, okay? It's not, it's not pure imagination. It's, it's a reality, okay? So we talk about the Hurt Sutra and <clears throat> I talk about our lineage, the Tindai lineage. Tindai lineage is one lineage started in China and they are the one they use the Lotus Sutra. Why use that? Because many schools in China, they make the practice of Buddhism so difficult. They have some requirement, something difficult to get in and it makes people get discouraged. Why is it so difficult? In the Tiendai school, they said no, everybody can become Buddha. If you trust yourself, you believe yourself, you study the Lotus Sutra, you get the alignment, you get it. You don't have to wait, you don't have to wait, next slide or different things happen, you know. You get the alignment, you get the Zen uh, practice and you get the realization and maybe you can see your true self, discover your true self. It's very, very difficult, it's very, very dogmatic. But in the Tendai school, they said, no, you can become Buddha. Okay? Just practice it. And the way they do it, they said, if you practice it and you discover your true self, your true nature, and you become Buddha, in, right in the rich life. You don't have to wait the next life. You don't have to wait uh, how many years. And, and many of them, many of the patriarchs and Tiendai, they get alignment in their, their life. Okay? They don't wait the next life. So the, the first one is uh, the Indian um, monk. He's the first patriarch. He's the one he teach, he give the instruction to the second patriarch, Wei Wan, the Chinese uh, monk. And then the Chinese monk give to another one, the third patriarch, Wei Tu, and Wei Tu give to Qi Yi. Qi is not the fourth patriarch, he's the head, he's the head of the uh, Tiendai school. He's from the, one of the mountain Tiendai, they build the temple there, they teach that. And the teaching spread to all over China in the 5th, 6th century, and then 11th century, it expand. Then you go to Japan, to Korea, and Vietnam. So many of us, and my school, my teacher, he uh, is one of the patriarchs from our lineage too. So we see in the back, he have uh, the statue of uh, Chi Yi, that the patriarch of the Tiendai. That's the one we follow the Dirty Sutra. Because the Dirty Sutra, it tells us that all of us, we have a Buddha nature. We are very precious. You learn how to trust yourself, to have self-confidence, to have self-esteem. And you said, you know, no, I'm a worthy person. It's a matter of time. I practiced. I like to set up the GPS. You can go there. You can go. You reach the Buddha hood. You look at the solar calendar. You said 100 years is so long. But look at cosmic calendar. 100 years means nothing. It's even not a nanosecond. The history of the Earth, how many million years, is only the first few days of the month of January in a cosmic calendar. So, 100 years of us mean nothing. What it means? It means all of us will become Buddha. It may be one day or two days. Maybe that one day or two days, that I means one or two million years. But in cosmic calendar, that means one or two days. That means nothing. That means you believe it. You trust yourself. You have a self-esteem, self-appreciation. You said, I will become Buddha. I reached that level, okay? And Buddha say this one, I am the Buddha, you are the Buddha in the future. That's very correct. He, he tell you the truth and you have to believe yourself. 
And in one chapter, I have one monk. He's a never disparaging monk. He go out, he see you, he bow to you. I bow to you, sir. I respect you, I respect to you. And he thought, oh, he ridiculed me. He made fun of me. He said, I'm a Buddha. He tell you the truth, okay? He tell you, you see it. He see you true nature. But people, they don't understand Buddhism. He said, oh, that guy, he make fun of me. He teased me, he said, I'm a Buddha. But really, he tell you the truth. He see you true nature, okay? And that, like for example, when you go to school, your teacher, she or he said, you'd be an educated person. You didn't believe it. Really, you will have good education because you go the right way. Sooner or later, you finish education. It's, we never finish education, but you get education. So you believe it, but you didn't believe it. No, I didn't believe it. You drop out of the school, but you believe in that. You continue to study. You keep studying and get education, education. You better education. That's the self-esteem, self-appreciation. So today, I talked about the <clears throat> chapter one. They said, the introduction. It's the first part, you know. You see the meeting, Sakyamuni, with a lot of people. 12,000 monks, 6,000 nuns, all kinds of people. So you see, there are no discrimination. He teach, he teach the people, say, he introduce people, he said, First, what he come in here, what he say about? He say first about the uh, one sutra, he called uh, a sutra, immeasurable meaning. However, something is, you cannot measure, it limitless, have no limit to that. You understand it before you go in the Lotus Sutra. So he said, he go in that, he teach that sutra, he go in the deep meditation in Samadhi, and after you get out of that, you tell people that the one you will see your true nature. You learn if you have your true nature, you, your Buddha nature, or your awakened nature, and you believe that you will realize it. Okay? So that's the introduction. That's the first part of the introduction. That's the door, the yeah. historical door. The second door is the ultimate door. That after you study, you reach that, you will go to the ultimate door. You know something at a high level, and it brings you to the true meaning of the Lotus Sutra. And you find more and more your true nature. Okay? And you believe it more, and you practice it. And it's a wonderful sutra. They call it the king of the sutra. It's really the highest sutra. The other is to ask Buddha teacher. Why Buddha teacher? Other? Step by step he do it. First, you know, he knows that when you first learn, you have to learn something basic, okay? So he teach you three vehicles. First, the Sravakas, the listener, the hearer, and then second one, the Pratyasa Buddhas, the one who understand the 12 origin, origination, origin. He learn that. And then the last one, the Bodhisattva. Bodhisattva is the one who practiced, but they postponed their alignment so it can stay with the people to help the people. The Bodhisattva way, the one, you know, I'm not practice the two first one. They practice for themselves. So they call small vehicle. The small vehicle you can carry only yourself. The Bodhisattva is the big vehicle. You can carry yourself and all the people. So they want to carry the other people. And after that, Buddha teach in the Lotus Sutra, they said, no three eight vehicle. I do it because I want to teach you. I don't want you to give up. He said, it's too difficult. It's too complicated. I never can reach that level. I'm not that high. I'm not that good worthy. So I don't trust myself. So he did this guy, I show you the low level, and said that nirvana is to stop like a rest area. You, you are the traveler. You do a long journey. You want some place to rest, so they have rest area. People, they go to rest area, they believe, oh, 
that my destination. I stay here, right here, so pretty. They have water, they have restroom, everything. I don't need to go anywhere. I stay here. Buddha say no. This is a rest area only. Nirvana is not the end. You need to go further. You go to Buddhahood to become a Buddha. So that the religion advances more. So that's the meaning of the beauty of the Lotus Sutra. Okay? And you just practice a little bit. If you have a, if you have many good translation, they have some tradition from the 19th century in, in England, you know, and but the new one, the one I use to advise people from one American, his name Burton Watson. He's very good translation. You read that, you understand it. And the practice one chapter maybe if you have time. One chapter a day, it takes you maybe one hour, one hour and a half to do it. You can read it or chant it. The more you do it, the more you understand. So it takes you 28 chapter, one month, the book. So for the year, it takes about 12 time. Keep doing it, keep doing it. The more you do it, the more you understand. You penetrate it, you understand it. The meaning is very deep, you know. Because Buddha is a kind of teacher. He used the metaphor, he used metaphor, he used analogy, he used parable, he used all things to teach people. You are intelligent, he teach you intelligent way. You understand right way. You are middle level, he teach you that way. You slow learner, teach you that way. Every understand it. So it's for everybody. So you, you learn it and you enjoy it. And the practice Buddhism is sharing, okay? You don't practice just for yourself. You practice to see the, the beauty of the uh, Dharma, the benefit of Dharma, benefit yourself and help the other people. Help the, you, a good friend, your family, everybody, they enjoy it. Make them happy. Buddhism brings you happiness. You live in peace and bliss, okay? We don't ask for something superficial, like, uh, oh, if I practice, I have uh, better luck and have a uh, promotion and make more money and happier. No, it's that I delivered myself from attachment, from everything. I, be, I have total freedom, okay? I'm not attached anymore because even you reach, you still attach it. You attach your money, you worry about how I can keep my money, how I invest my money, how I can make more money. If you have a family set, how I can protect my wife, my children. They get old, they get sick. After that, they get out of the nest, they have their family move out, I miss them. So sooner or later, you get dissatisfied. You never be happy. So if you practice Buddhism, you get the true freedom. You liberate yourself from the attachment and no suffering, nothing. You're really happy. So that the end result of a practice Buddhism. Practice it, be happy, and share the happiness with other people. Because Buddhism, practice is sharing. Buddha say this one, the best practice is to serve the human being, serve the other people. You don't practice just for yourself. You practice to serve other people to serve society, to serve your country, to serve the world. That, that's the, the good practice of Buddhism. So I hope that I just touch about the introduction of the Lotus Sutra. If any question, I try to answer your question. Yes. Can you take the muscles? I can hear you a little bit better.
Now, a uh, bodhisattva is uh, one of the, the bigger vehicle. That's the, the first step, like uh, the Sarakas, the least uh, learner. That's the one, the first, first uh, hear the teaching of a Buddha, uh, the Four Noble Truth, you know, they that they realize they get some merit. And the, the second step, the people, the Pratyaka Buddha, they understand the 12 origination origin and they reach that level. The Bodhisattva is the third level, it is higher. What the Bodhisattva, it can be lay people, it can be monastic people. They reach that level. Instead of helping themselves only, you know, I reach that level, I go to Nirvana. The Bodhisattva is not a Nirvana. They go higher, but what their goal is to serve the other people. They want to serve the people, they said, they are more altruistic, okay? They're not like uh, the first uh, two ones. They are a little bit selfish. They practice, they become a better person. They get out that attachment on the suffering, but for themselves only. They then help the other people. The Buddhism said, no, I reached that level, but I want to help the other people, not for myself. I want to be happy, I go to that level, but I want to, all the people reach my level, I, I do it to practice it. Like you can see some people, uh, I met some uh, Tibetan monk, for example. Uh, I was joking, I said, why you practice Buddhism? I said, I want to become Buddha. I said, why become Buddha? I want to become Buddha so I can turn around to help the other people to become Buddha themselves. So that's the, the goal, okay? It's not, you stop there. You need to stop and become Bodhisattva. And you stop, I said, oh, that I, I have the, my higher merit. And Bodhisattva is almost the Buddha. They said, no, I don't stop here. I, I want to help people. Like a Sakyamuni Buddha. He said, in the past, he was already a Buddha. He come back to this one, the apparition. It's not like a deity. He said, I come back as a human being so I can show to the people. If I can do it, they can do it. Okay? That's all they do. it. They said, that's my goal again. I, my apparition is not the people go there to uh, bow to me or, or respect me, put me in the throne. I don't there. Just show to me I'm a normal being. I'm like them. It's my effort, my practice. I elevate myself. I become a Buddha. They can do the same thing. So, Bodhisattva are the same. You do to help, okay? Many, many form of Bodhisattva. You see, like a, you can see in, in the real world, there are many, many Bodhisattva. Like, for example, Mother Teresa, she's a Catholic, but she's a Bodhisattva. But all her life, she served the people. She served the poor people, the sick people, the kid, the aged people. So it had to be Bodhisattva, okay? She's a saint that they canonize now in the uh, Vatican, they canonize. But with us, she's the Bodhisattva. Bodhisattva is a saint, no more, no less. And many people outside, you know, they, they can be like a Bodhisattva, okay? Like a, we say this one is a little bit uh, too much because we are human beings, we can not just uh, praise or elevate somebody. But like uh, sometimes, some people say that, like uh, being gay, many of the action is like a Bodhisattva. But somebody will criticize, yeah, he's not perfect, nobody is perfect. But the way he does it, he spent billion dollars, hundred billion dollars, he buy vaccine, he buy get to help the poor country. And he do a lot of things. He buy a laptop for the kid in the inner city. So the action like Bodhisattva. He used a lot of his money for charity. But some people, I say that, some people criticize that. No, he's a bad competition. He, when he competes, he hurt the other people. Yes, we are not, not perfect. But just his action is the Bodhisattva action. 
we're not perfect, but he's better than us, <laughs> much better than us. Any other question? If on the question, we uh, chant the transfer merit, we go chanting. Namo Sakya Mone Buddha. Namo Sakya Mone Buddha. Namo Sakya Mone Buddha. And he's supposed to come here and we accomplish today. We want to transfer to the wisdom to alignment.
Mantra. Thank uh-huh. 
working mindfully, working joyfully.